Hi, I'm uh, I'm sitting uh, with uh, Marie Castille Mention Char. Uh, she is uh, currently the uh, president of the jury of the Festival International du Film sur le Handicap uh, that will take place in Lyon uh, early February for, from, from 4 to 9 February. And uh, we are going to have a few words about uh, her career, why and how she uh, came into the film business as a writer, as a director and a producer and, uh, and her experience about film festivals. Uh, so maybe the first question would be a little bit of a chronological one. Um, I, I can see, uh, I think I read that you started as a journalist working uh, for the uh, French Bureau of uh, Hollywood Reporter. Is that right? Not the French Bureau. No. I, I worked for the Hollywood Reporter in Los Angeles. Oh, in LA. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How come? Yes. How come? What? Uh, and... Well, because I, I, um, I uh, wanted to uh, pursue my uh, journalism uh, studies and yeah. uh, to do a master in broadcasting. But when I arrived in Los Angeles, where my uh, father lived, um, I was too late in terms of deadline for university and all that. So I started working because I needed money and I started working for Good a, excuse. <laughs> a small uh, press agency, uh, which was really not very interesting. And um, of course, in Los Angeles, the main, you know, main business is uh, is uh, run by Hollywood and uh, and uh, the film industry. So very quickly, I uh, answered a, uh, a job offer at the Hollywood Reporter, and um, that's how I started there. Uh, and then became, uh, after a couple of years, the uh, associate international editor. Um, of the Hollywood Reporter. So I was the one to uh, supervise the bureaus all over the world, including the French Bureau, but I was in LA. Fantastic. And did you, uh, did you have to cover, did you cover Cannes and uh, other big festivals? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> right. How, uh, how did this help? in your career, probably in more in the working, uh, writing career or? No, it was, it was really, first of all, my first step in the movie industry, because that was not at all my goal. I yeah. was, uh, I was very interested in uh, everything that has to do with investigating. Uh, so my goal was to be a investigation uh, reporter. Uh, and, uh, but in Los Angeles, again, uh, <laughs> that's not what was the most, uh, you know, uh, interesting for people. It was the, the Hollywood. It's all industry. about movies. Exactly. So, um, so the Hollywood Reporter was my first step, you know, in the, in the movie industry and, uh, was when I was the associate international editor. My first day, um, I had a lunch, I had to cover a lunch um, that was organized uh, in a studio uh, with French producers. And um, so I met, you know, French producers uh, at, at that luncheon. One of them was Yves Rousserouard, All right. uh, who, who was, you know, a great producer of uh, so many uh, incredible uh, box office uh, records like you know Emmanuel, Le Père Noël est une ordure, uh, uh, Les Bronzés and uh, comedies, the best comedies with her head I mean some of them <laughs> and he was very impressed that a uh, woman from France you know a girl from France um, was actually uh, working at the Hollywood Reporter and of course so yeah. we, we uh, you know stayed in touch and uh, when I left the Hollywood Reporter I started working for French producers and Canadian producers. Um, and one of them was Eve, um, you know, where I organized uh, some financing, uh, you know, uh, connected him with uh, writers in Los Angeles, with uh, studios, you know, organized meetings and all that. And so he said, if ever you come back to France one day, uh, you know, let me know. And so when I, um, came back to France. I gave him a call. I said, "Eve, I'm coming back," and he said, "Oh, great news! Because I'm 
I've just been elected uh, deputy. And uh, so um, I need uh, you to come and uh, I have a movie that I want to do. And, uh, and he really trusted me, uh, you know, with this company, gave me the key uh, and said, uh, here you go. Now you, you do everything. And uh, he was, you know, there behind me because he had all the experience, of course, which I didn't have because I never... I never worked in the film industry in France, and uh, but it was such a, a gesture of uh, trust that he had, and uh, it was incredible. And that's how I started uh, producing. What was the movie you produced? What's the name? It was called Golden a Golden Boy. And that's uh, how we met, actually, because I distributed your movie. <laughs> exactly. So Isn't that amazing? That was, uh, when was that? That was 1907 or? Or no, six. Uh, yeah, 96, yeah. 96, I yes. Exactly. That was, uh, for me, it was a crazy, crazy days because uh, we, I was uh, asked to join and, and, and form the joint venture between Fox and UGC. And my first six months, I had 26 movies to distribute. That's one wow. a week. That's, I mean, they really wanted me to go away <laughs> and, and, and become fed up by, by distribution because you can't do a proper job uh, with one movie a week. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I, I, the, the film was great. And I, I, I do remember working, uh, um, the, 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 the cast was fantastic, of course. Yeah, Jacques Villeray, yeah. uh, Anne Romanoff, uh, Martin Lamotte, uh, it was uh... yeah, it was great comedy, and so then, uh, how long did you stay with them before you moved with uh, Pierre Cubel, uh, joining a new company? Uh, well, I uh, stayed with Eve for about um, three, two or three years, but then after Golden Boy, we um, uh, tried to produce another movie, and we couldn't raise the finance, and that's how when I decided to leave and create my own company with uh, Pierre. Uh, and we created Loma Nasha. So, for, so, so, so my audience knows a little bit more. Uh, Pierre Cubel uh, was one of the top advertisers. I mean, uh, one of the uh, few uh, uh, promotion and advertising companies dealing, uh, uh, specializing, focusing on film marketing, which is really uh, very, very specific and, and needs uh, great skills. And uh, so he, how you witnessed the moment when he wanted to start and become a producer? Well, I met him as an advertiser. Eve introduced me to Pierre because he's the one who did the campaign for Golden Boy. Yeah. Um, and uh, we um, had a uh, love story with Pierre at that uh -huh. time. And that's when I discovered that he uh, was very much uh, interested in, uh, you know, producing had, had uh, always interested him. And uh, since I uh, was, uh, became a producer, then I, you know, I uh, said, well, let's create a, a company together because we are very complete in terms of, uh, you know, developing, producing and advertising and, uh, so we were we we were a perfect uh, <laughs> team. Perfect uh, team. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, of course. If you manage to put advertising um, in 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 each of the steps of the production of a movie early on, that's a very big advantage. Uh, exactly. Especially having the, this eye for what's an interesting angle, what is the thing that we need to keep to share later when the film comes out, that's very, very valuable. And, and very few uh, producers have that luxury of having a, someone to look uh, over the shoulder and say, oh, uh, we should use that for the campaign uh, next exactly. year when we release or whatever. That, I do believe that's very important. Yeah, and uh, also to always think about the audience, you know, yes, what, uh, what audience uh, you may interest, you may, uh, 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 um, how do you say, uh, you know. What's your target? Exactly. And so that's very important to always think about that. And yeah. also when you do the movie, you know, when uh, 
we were producers. We thought about that, of course, uh, and with the directors that we produced. But when I became a director, that's some, something that I always had in mind that when I shoot, I say, oh, that could be good for a trailer, you know, that, yeah. you know, that will be useful for, for the campaign. So, yeah, it's uh, very important to always and, think about the audience and how you're going to uh, connect to them. I believe that's uh, something that differentiates you from other uh, filmmakers in France who sometimes uh, are more focused on making the movie they want uh, instead of making the movie that people want, the audience wants. And, and, and sometimes I've seen producers that do not uh, just uh, ask themselves, uh, what's my audience? <laughs> Well, you, you, you can really never know if we knew that, you know, what the audience wants, of course, what movie they want, we all would be very, uh, <laughs> very <Wow>. rich <laughs> and very successful. You, you never really know, but uh, what is but important? At least you have to put the question. Sorry? Yeah. At least you need to put the question to question yourself uh, oh. and, and, and to make a guess. That's... Oh. That's a film that maybe those type of people will want and those people, what do they care for? What do they, anyway, so it's, uh, so after, so tell, uh, let's go a little bit forward. Uh, so what's, what comes we're, next? We're far. <laughs> <laughs> what comes next? Uh, so yeah, after your, your uh, so how long have you been, uh, are you still working with uh, Pierre? Well, we still have our uh, one of our companies, and I created my own company uh, um, after Les Héritiers. Um, the first movie that I produced on my own company was Le Ciel Attendra, Heaven Will Wait. Uh, but Which so, you wrote and directed and produced. Yes, yes. I, I produced all my movies, um, <laughs> even when I was with, with, with Pierre. Hmm. Uh, but so yes, we um, we still have our, our company, but he has his own also, and I have my own. So. Okay, so um, uh, what was the uh, Heaven Can Wait um, has had a very important uh, festival run. Can you tell us a little bit where yeah. you did Locarno, yeah, Toronto? I'm sorry to disappoint you. I didn't direct Heaven Can Wait. That's another great movie, but that's not me. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Well, the, 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 I mean, how do you translate it? What's in the French? Term? Heaven will wait. Heaven will. Heaven will wait. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, it was a. Uh, it was my first uh, really experience in terms of festival, uh, because the the movies I did before, um, I they were not a lot of experience in, in festivals. Um, uh, my first film had a, a few, uh, probably because his audience was uh, uh, a young audience and some festivals, especially abroad, were interested. Like I, I went to Russia with the, the film, I went to, uh, uh, to Italy, I went to Spain, I went to a few countries, but but in terms of, of um, it really started with uh, Heaven Will Wait with uh, Locarno, which was an incredible. How did you uh, pick that festival? Or they ask you how, tell us yeah, how. They did. Well, it's, you know, I, I really trusted my distributor, um, which was UGC. Um, and uh, they're the one who guided me because I, I didn't really have any experience with, uh, with that kind of, of thing I had as a producer, but not as a director. So, so I really trusted my uh, my distributor to, uh, you know. So I suppose you, you they made the decision because uh, Lucano is one of the uh, top ten, let's say, and uh, in the summer that was uh, very convenient for a full uh, release. So you released that film in what September or October, or something uh, like that. It was. Um, when was, uh, I think it was October, yeah. October. Right, so it's pretty convenient. And then you went also to, to Toronto? Uh-huh, yes, Toronto. Um, uh, any, uh, any French ones too? No, probably not. Yes, Angoulême, there was Angoulême, which oh, was yeah? a great, uh, great experience because uh, 
at that time, uh, Dominique Besnéa had, had organized also a uh, uh, some kind of seminar, you know, like a Q and A about the uh, subject of the movie um, with some, uh, you know, uh, persons that were really involved, you know, um, uh, in the subject, and that was uh, so we participated in that, and and it was a great audience that was very interesting. So. So that um, it was, and it was probably the beginnings, no, the early days of the Angoulême, I think, early years. No, 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 no. Angoulême uh, had been there because that was, we're talking about what, 2016? So. Yeah, all right. And what, well, just to move uh, a little bit closer to your actuality, um, I saw you had three films released in 21. Really? Two? Yeah. Alucine says. Oh. oh, because you're talking maybe also about the short film on Arte, maybe? I don't know. Um, um, well, which film did you have in 21? Let's put it in a different way. 21 it was uh, a movie that I produced uh, with uh, Christine Oxel called uh, Cigar au Miel. With Ka Cigar. by Karim as yes, exactly. yeah. by Nude, um, uh, which was at the Venice Film Festival. And uh, then my last movie was released, The Good Man. Uh, and, uh, and then I had the short film uh, part of the um, uh, series Ash Van Cat. That was yes, that's the one I was mentioning. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah. In, uh, on Arte. Mm -hmm. uh, that great series that they did, uh, you know, on um, on very feminine uh, uh, subjects, and and um, so they asked me if I would be participating in that series. That was a great experience. It wasn't the first time that I did a short film after uh, yeah. after six <laughs> feature film. That was interesting. So what, where I wanted to to ask you is how you. Uh, how tough is it to distribute the movie in theaters in 21, in the middle of a pandemic? Pandemics. It's, it's a real... Um, it's challenge. A, <laughs> no, it's not even a challenge, because a challenge, uh, you, you know, if you work, if you, um, you know, are creative, if you uh, do everything, you know, in order to uh, meet the challenge, then you can succeed you know you can really uh, get over the challenge this is not at all a time where it's just a, a matter of challenge it's a matter of something that has nothing to do with anything we know no control and, uh, no control whatsoever and it's very violent i must like say a nightmare <laughs> uh yes uh it's it's the kind of um of you 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 know you kind of wake up and say okay am i am i still going to do uh stay in this um you know um in this not job because i've never taken this as a job it's more of a passion more of a you know something that you need to do you want to do because uh, it's important in your life and uh, but uh, you know you say what's the point you know because you make movies to actually um, meet people, you know, by through that film, uh, and then if people don't see the movie, what's the point, you know? And and uh, I understand. You you even think, you know, then yes, maybe uh, maybe I want to do movies. Uh, you know, what's the point of doing movies for the theaters if uh, first of all the theaters are not going to be that supportive of of uh, filmmakers, uh, which I think has been the case, really, where I feel that we've been very supportive of movie theaters, and I don't think that it's uh, it's been the other way. Uh, That's and, new. Uh, That's not new. <laughs> yeah, but but in this in this violent period, I think this is you know where we need the most solidarity between each other and and i haven't seen that much and uh that's that's also what um uh, what's made me question myself a lot about you know what are we going to do tomorrow 
Yeah. So you had to, did you have a, a rescheduled dates or change of dates? Or did you have to yes. change or ambitions in, no, in terms of uh, number of prints, number of uh, the size of the advertising budget and stuff like that? What were the consequences? Well, the, the consequence is that you, again, you say what my goal is to, uh, especially with the movies that I make, you know, I, I, I really want to, uh, for people to be able to see the movie and, and uh, for, for them to, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe question themselves, maybe, uh, you know, think about what they've seen and how they're going to, uh, think about the subject in life and and then if uh, they are not given the opportunity of seeing the movie because uh, you know there's so little you know few theaters you know then then it, you feel like you've done that for nothing and it's, mm. it's very and, and can you it's a difficult question but can you uh, guess or evaluate um, the consequence the impact of the Uh, of that crisis on, let's say, uh, the, the number of prints, or basically, did you have did you have to put uh, 40% less prints that you would have done in a normal con uh, con uh, configuration, in normal days, uh, would you have gone higher uh, in terms of a distribution uh, and number of prints and stuff like that, and admissions, of course, because that's... Uh, yeah. No, how much I, do you think it cost you? I, I don't know I because I I, I don't uh, in in that in that moment it's really the director who's been suffering not as much the producer because the uh, the producer it's like you're used to you know sometimes you make movies you think it's going to be a great success it is not because again you never know what the the audience is going to like or not like. But uh, it, it's more the, the director who's, again, uh, suffered from, um, you know, working for so long, working so hard ab about my actors, my crew, my everybody, who, you know, gave so much for that movie to, to exist. And, uh, and when you're proud of a movie, you know, when you don't like your movie yourself, and that can happen, you know, you say, okay, well, it's, uh, it's the continuity of, of, of that. But when you, when you're proud of a movie, uh, proud of the work that everybody's done to, um, you feel like it's been sacrificed and, and that's, that's really painful. It's like, a, you know, you have to uh, digest that and it takes a while. When did you shoot, uh, when did uh, Karim shoot his movie? Because I, I remember I, I met him, uh, we chatted uh, at uh, Emir Kusturika's festival in January 20. No, it's, it's not Karim, it's Camilla. It's her, his sister. Oh. It's his ah. sister that I produced. <laughs> I thought so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's funny. It's, his sister. Oh, wow. That's funny. Yeah, Camilla, I knew, yes, that, that's her first movie. Well, that's how you read too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, uh, what's what's on your plate next? Uh, you have another film you you're working, you're finishing, you're editing. I understand. Yes, I'm editing, and I'm gonna have to go back soon. <laughs> yes. So, what's the, the name of the title? What's the film? It's it's called Divertimento. Um, and it's about, it's based, inspired by a true story of uh, Zaya Ziwani and her twin sister, Fekuma Ziwani, um, both, uh, you know, uh, born and raised in the suburbs of Paris, um, coming from uh, an Algerian family who um, apparently, you know, you don't think that they're uh, much into the... Um, Uh, symphonic and uh, you know music uh, music uh, culture and um, that was the case her their parents were totally totally um, you know fascinated by culture in general everything that they did not have access to when uh, you know when they were children themselves and and um, Zaya and Fituma became very very uh, when they were very little 
started to practice instruments, you know, uh, and um, Zaya wanted to become a um, chef, you know. Uh, chef uh, yeah. Exactly. And uh, we're talking about the 90s, 1990s. Well, you have to know that today there's between only four and six percent of women who are, you know, um, That's true. doctors yeah. still. But in 1995, you know, when a young woman who's uh, 18 years old says, I want to become a uh, orchestra conductor, you can imagine that yeah. you know, uh, how difficult it has been for her. And uh, for that, because she wanted not only to become a conductor, but she also wanted to uh, create a orchestra that was different from all the orchestras that she had seen that were, of course, at that time, still very white and very masculine. Um, she, um, and also she wanted to bring the music, the symphonic music to areas where that kind of music never- That's good, yeah. Never, never went. Uh, she created with her sister, a orchestra called Divertimento and uh, really, um, you know, changed a uh, whole, you know, attitude and um, a, a, about uh, symphonic music. And she's now, you know, she's been a great uh, conductor for years now. Uh, Mike, I see, I see a pattern here, or maybe correct me if I'm wrong, as someone who wants to make movie that, movies that are positive movies that matter. And maybe that's, all, that's also very consistent to your work in the 50-50 uh, in parity. Does the idea of making movies that matter drive you or is it something that you have in mind? Is, uh, that you... Well, you know, I think that the um, stories, the subject that you're attracted to, of course, have uh, a link to who you are as a person. Yes. who you are as a human being. Um, so, of course, I'm always attracted. I always love to talk to people who uh, inspire me because I feel that they are, you know, great lessons about humanity, great lessons about being positive, uh, great lessons about giving hope to others. And that's those people, those stories always inspire me as a person. And, um, and then I say, well, if they inspire me, if they give me hope about something, then if I make a movie about them, then they can give hope to, you know, more people. Yeah, and, uh, fantastic. So, yeah. That's you have used I the word hope three times, and I, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that because uh, you remember we met in Cannes uh, the year you received this uh, positive prize the, the, from, uh, from uh, Jacques Attali. Mm -hmm. And that year, I was also doing a, a conference uh, with Wim Wenders. We had a, we were doing a series of conference about making movies that matter, which is something that's very dear to me. And, and uh, we, uh, for that in instance, we asked the, uh, uh, the Minister of Communication of the Pope uh, to, to come can to come to Cannes. And it was the first time someone from Vatican came to Cannes because, it, it, the, uh, of course, you remember that uh, Vim was shooting, had shot uh, the movie, the, the documentary about the Pope François, uh, 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 François, un homme de, de man of his world. And uh, because the, the guy, the guy, the, the, the Minister of Communication of the Vatican came, I asked him, hey, how about, well, I didn't say hey, but I asked politely, <laughs> yeah. do you think the Pope could... Uh, uh, write, send us a message to the Cannes filmmaking community uh, assembled in Cannes um, about film, about whatever he wants to say to this community. I also remember when talking to producers and directors, I say, I don't care what the Pope thinks. I'm not here to, I'm not listening to what he has to say about the films I want to do. I, I pick my own film, etc. So it was a very tricky subject. But the the letter that the, the Pope sent us was extremely positive and basically, I mean, really fantastic. And it ended by hope, the word hope. Basically, he was saying... Uh, there has been evil and, uh, and, and good for since the beginning of the, the ages. And so you can't 
change that. You can't escape that. But what's important when someone is making a movie about something that describes evil is that it gives hope at the end. Something, something like that. I, of course, I, I, I'm not saying it the way he did, which was mo much more <laughs> poetic and true and and fine. But I, I, I did remember this this, this idea of uh, sharing hope is uh, really important in, in our days. And uh, and maybe that's the, our final question and and, and link with uh, what you're doing here with the festival about the handicap. Uh, as the president of a jury, have you seen the films yet? Or have you tell us a bit? Uh, of course, we 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 have a you you uh, tonight. So <laughs> you, you you are did you decide the winners? That was actually the question I I wanted. Uh, well, I I have my uh, yeah I I have my palmarès uh, in mind, but. Uh, I'm not supposed to tell you. <laughs> no, no, of course, but I, 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 I didn't say it right. Did you actually uh, is the the, the palmarès decided yet, or did you all come up to a conclusion, or is still? No, no, uh, no. We, we, we oh. are meeting tonight. We are meeting tonight. It's okay, I thought it was yesterday. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, so, I hope it's tonight and I, that I didn't miss. Uh, I think I would have had a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dinner tonight. Yeah, because uh, Lilian wanted me to come, but I, I'm, uh, I'm not going out. I'm, uh, I, I just don't want to be positive in case because I'm leaving. Uh, I'm taking the plane next Friday, so <laughs> just being cautious. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Mike Esti, it's been great talking uh, with you. It's been a long time, and uh, I'm really impressed by by the, the fantastic trajectory uh, you, you've had in making movies that uh, you wanted and you cared for and, uh, and sharing them with us. And I wish the festival a great success. <laughs> I wanted to say something about hope, but it's OK. I'll oh, no, no, I want hope. So please share. <laughs> No, no, because the, I, I, I'm very grateful about what you say about hope because it's not a very French, you know, it's not very French. That's and, true. Uh, yeah. and, and it's true that the, my first, uh, I, I noticed after my first positive movie, you know, I noticed the criticism I could get, especially from journalists, uh, you know, about that uh, mind, that state of mind, being positive, you know. Uh, yeah. And and um, and it really questioned me. But at some point, when I saw what a positive movie can have um, as an impact on the audience, you know, people who come after a movie say things to you and and say how they were, you know, moved by a movie, how that can really change things in their life, or you know, like like I remember movies that I saw and that had a big impact on on me. Well, I decided that that was the most important thing. And I didn't care about the fact that, you know, in France, it's not always very well uh, seen or respected by kind of people, you know, being positive, being giving hope, you know, and uh, that's what I love. And that's why I'm very honored to be the president of this festival is that I've seen a lot of movies, um, you know, short or long where Yes, hope, being positive is very important. Even when, you know, you um, live with um, uh, things and, and um, handicaps that a lot of people couldn't live with and still there is hope and still there is being, you know, being positive. And that's what I like about life. And that's what I like about movies. And that's why I'll always try to be positive and give hope to the audience. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, I just I can't help from thinking back to when I was a distributor with Sony. I I, I became very aware of that when I released the film Philadelphia, mm -hmm. because I think I thought at the time that that movie was extremely important. I and I, Jesus, I've shivered. I like <laughs> I, I really enjoyed working on that movie, and I do remember uh, Tom Hanks uh, giving a year of his life walking around the planet i mean promoting the movie and speaking about how important that a film is and uh and uh i do remember the fight i had with the studio because the studio didn't understand they thought it was a great courtroom drama 
said, no, it's not what it is. It's something much more powerful. And uh, But I couldn't find the word. So I, I went to someone who I showed the film to Philippe Labro, and he put the words on it. He said, uh, and he put his words and we were able to create a teasing poster, which has actually the ribbon. You remember the black, the red ribbon with the big uh, 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 sentence from uh, Philippe Labo and, and by the director of the Silence of the Lamb. And that was a way of getting rid of all the stupid things you have to put on the poster, billing blocks and all of that. And uh, and the, 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 the studio where... Um, allowed me to use that teasing campaign, uh, but not for the revealing, because they just wanted the hammer and the two faces of the, <laughs> of the, oh yeah, oh yeah. And isn't it beautiful? It's so graphic, it's beautiful. Yes, and, and uh, it's amazing that you talk about this movie, uh, Bruno, because this is something that I've never told anyone. <laughs> really? But, you know, I went, I, I fought a lot to go to the premiere of Philadelphia in Paris on the Champs Elysees. With uh, Douce de Blasie. We did this with uh, uh, Nino with husband, I went with my husband who had AIDS. Oh, God. And uh, so let me tell you that this premiere of this film was such an incredible experience for both of mm. us, especially mm. for him. Uh, but so, yes. It, it was a, an amazing... And, and you wouldn't believe it, but when I I remember the, the head of the studio, what was his name? Uh, Mike Medavoy. I remember yes. talking to him, I'm sure when in your uh, Hollow Reporter days, I'm sure you've uh, meet, met him. It's yes, such I a mean, great guy. A I'm mean, very smart and, and gentle and all of that. And, and we were having dinner in Cannes in the cafe, in a, in a restaurant, and, and he was telling me about Philadelphia. He was giving me the pitch. I say, oh my God, what? A lawyer who fights his law firm because they fire him because he's got AIDS? Wow, that's, uh, that's how he described it. And I said, that's, I don't understand it. That's, uh, it's, 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 it's very bold. And then when they released, then they had the movie ready, they uh, had us all uh, in one theater in, in London, uh, all the guys from the field, from every territory, sales director, I mean, the, the managing director and marketing director and said, well, guys, this is a safe room. We absolutely have no idea how we can market that movie. Tell us what you think. Tell us how much you think it's going to do and how you could. Uh... And I do remember I mean, it was like watching uh, Johnny got his gun. I was carried through emotions that were like literally grabbing my, my guts and I was moved. And uh, just before me, my boss, I was marketing director, the head of the, the Paris office said, mm, it's not going to work. It shows death, AIDS, bad for a movie. It's not entertaining. It's so... And because it was a safe place, I said, and he said, it's going to do 9 million francs at the time. So not much. And I said, I was moved. I think it's going to do at least three or four times. And I think AIDS, it's an important film. And I think uh, we had, we, it came after the film. Uh, there had been a movie about AIDS that had been the, the French director uh, who died from AIDS and yeah. got the... Um, and and that French movie was not good. This one was uh, amazing. So I thought, yes. Plus we had uh, Montagnier who discovered and all of that. Say no, we're not afraid of death in France. We're not afraid of uh, talking about these things. I I think it's going to work. And uh, and it did. <laughs> and I'm so happy I worked on that movie. It was amazing. But then. I had uh, this funny, sorry for postponing your editing job, but uh, I was interviewed with, uh, by Le Figaro, Le Monde, uh, Henri Jean Béard, and he had interviewed uh, Mike Medavoy about the movie. And I said bluntly that uh, we'd uh, change the campaign because we thought there were more into it, into that film. And um, 
So I was open about how we did it, what I changed, the post, the, the trailer, and all lots of things and positioning. And uh, and when the article was released, uh, my boss uh, in LA asked me to send a translation of a movie of, of the article where Mike Medavoy was interviewed. And, and I said, "Well, Duncan, I have a problem because I criticized a bit the international strategy, and then because Duncan was British." He said, well, Bruno, maybe you do not have to translate your part. <laughs> so that was safe for me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we did. We, we had a, a unique campaign in France and um, I really enjoyed that movie and it was amazing. So yeah. funny, we were there together. <laughs> and we didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Marcus, thank you so much for giving me some of your precious time and uh, enjoy okay. the festival and uh, the food in Lyon. <laughs> oh, it's always a pleasure to go to Lyon uh, anyway. So yeah, fantastic. It's, and uh, it's say hello from me to all your jury fellows and uh, have a great time okay. there. Thank all you. Right. Thank you, Bruno. Bye thank bye. you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching filmfestival.com. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.